Yeah, it's stuck. It. Shalom a todos. Shalom. Shabbat shalom to everyone. Shabbat shalom. 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 Shabbat but God will give him the victory. Um, so this week's Torah portion is Parashat Naso. La portion semanal de la Torah es la Parashat Naso. La de esta semana. En esta semana vemos a la mujer adúltera que tiene que beber aguas amargas. In this Parashat portion, we see the, the adulterous woman and has to drink of bitter waters. So we all go to Numbers, chapter 5, please. Podemos ir a Números, capítulo 5, por favor. And it reads, If any man's wife goes to spring, speak to the Bene Israel and say to them, Suppose some man's wife goes to spring and is unfaithful to him. And another man has sexual relations with her, but it is hidden from her husband's eyes, and her impurity is not detected. Yet there was no witness against her, and she was not caught in the act. Then a spirit of jealousy overcomes him, and he is suspicious of his wife when she is impure. Or a spirit of jealousy overcomes him, and he suspects his wife, yet is not impure. Then he shall take his wife to the to the coffin, to the priest, he must also bring a tenth of an ephah of barley flour, flour as an offering to her. He is not to pour, pour oil or put incense on it because it is an offering for jealousy. A reminder of offering drawing attention to guiltiness. The Kohen, the, the priest, is also to bring her near and have her stand before Adonai. Then the Kohen is to take some holy water in a clay yard and take some dust from the floor of a tabernacle and put it into the water. Then the priest will have the woman stand before the nine, loosen the woman's hair, put into her hands the reminder offering, the offering of jealousy, while in the Kohen's own hands are the bitter waters that bring a curse. Then the Kohen, the priest, will have her swear on the oath, then say to the woman, if no man other than your husband has slept with you, and we have not gone astray into impurity from your husband, May this bitter word that brings a curse not harm you. If, however, you have gone astray from your husband, and if you became impure and had sexual relations with a man other than your husband, then the Kohen is to have the, wo the woman swear under this oath of a curse and say to the woman, Then let Alani cause you to be cursed and denounced among your people. When Alani curses your thigh uh, to, rock, to root and your belly to flow. May this water which brings a curse into your body and cause your belly to swell in your type of root, the woman is to say, Twelve night, Amen, Amen. Then the Kohen is to write the curses on a scroll and wash them in the waters of bitterness. The Kohen will then have the woman drink the bitter water, bearing curses, so that the water of the curses of bitterness enter her. Entonces vemos en el pasaje de Números 15, de 12 al 24, Número 5 del 12 24, todo el concepto en cuanto a la mujer adúltera. Tiene que ver eh, las eh, aguas amargas bajo un, bajo un juramento. Número 15, 18 dice: The covenant shall enter the woman, the covenant shall have the woman stand before her shame and uncover the woman's head. Número 5, 18 dice: El sacerdote tendrá a la mujer parada en frente del eterno y se tendrá que descubrir eh, su cabeza. Several prior breakdowns in communication and trust must have happened for the husband, 
who truly loved his wife, to bring her before the priest in humiliation. If he is vindicated, he will be humili he will be humiliated for causing this his innocent wife to endure this. The woman, if she is guilty, will be unlikely to proceed with the ritual. She will likely confess, and in the absence of two witnesses, she will not be stoned. She will only be divorced. Rather than being mis misogynistic, this law provides a foundation for the concept of sinut, which means uh, purity, modestia, sinut modestia, and avoidance of improper situations in Jewish society. Rabbi Isaiah Horowitz describes the meaning of the earthen vessel as the following. When God fashioned man, he took from the dust around the earthen altar, and thus vapor rose to irrigate that dust, so that a man was formed from dust and water. When a man became corrupt and sinned, he became a vessel of earthenware. On account of his dust contained in the material, he was made of. This is why the Sota, La Mujer Luta, the, the Arutra's woman, is given water to drink out of a vessel made out of earthenware. Entonces, lo que Davino as Isaiah Harold dice aquí es que el Eterno tomó de la tierra eh, irriga, irrigada y hizo una eh, eh, cerámica en el cuerpo del hombre. Es la razón por la que la mujer adultera tiene que beber de esta eh, vasija de cerámica. El Rabino Laiku dice lo siguiente. Cuando una mujer ha bebido de las aguas almargas, si es culpable, se va a poner pálida y sus ojos se, se hinchan. Entonces la llevan a la corte de las mujeres. Esa misma hora muer, muere. Y también se toma en cuenta eh, por el motivo por el cual se tomó el agua. Pero eso solamente para la condición para que el esposo, eh, eh, cuando el esposo no ha tenido culpa. Porque si ha tenido culpa él también, eh, esta agua no matará a su esposa. Uh, John Lightfoot said the following, when the woman had drunk the wa bitter water, if she be guilty, her looks turn pale. Her eyes fall off, so they turn her out of the court of the woman. The same hour that she dies, the doctors also, upon whose account she drank the water, dies too. But this is done only upon condition that the husband has been guiltless himself. For he had lain with an unlawfully himself, then this water will not uh, try his wife. Reverend Nassman said the following, in the course of the Sora ceremony, the altar of woman, which determines whether a woman was unfaithful to her husband, God's name is written on a shard of clay that is then dipped in water, causing the name to be erased. erased. It is as if God is saying, my name, which was written in holiness, may be erased in order to bring out peace between husband and wife. David Nassman dice lo siguiente, En la ceremonia de la mujer adultera, eh, la que determina si una mujer fue eh, infiel a su esposo o no, el nombre de Dios es escrito en un pedazo de cerámica y se pone en agua. Se sumerge en el agua, causando que el nombre sea borrado. Es como si Dios diría lo siguiente, lo que fue escrito en santidad se ha borrado para traer paz entre el esposo y la mujer. Juan 8, del 2 al 6. John, chapter 8 verse 2 to 6 says the following now very early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came to him he sat down and taught them the scribes and the pharisees brought a woman taken in adultery having set her in the midst they told him rabbi we found this woman in adultery in the very act now in our torah moses commanded us to stone such what then do you say about her? They said this testing him that they might have something to accuse him of. But Yeshua stopped down and wrote on the ground with his finger. Juan 8, del 2 al 6. Al amanecer vino otra vez al templo y todo el pueblo venía a él, y sentándose les enseñaba. Los escribas y los fariseos trajeron una mujer sorprendida en adulterio, y poniéndola en medio, dijeron a Yeshua, Rabino, esta mujer 
ha sido sorprendida en el acto mismo de adulterio. Y, y a ley de Moisés nos ordenó apedrear a esta clase de mujeres. ¿Tú qué piensas? ¿Qué dices? Decían esto poniendo a prueba a Jesús para tener de qué acusarlo. Pero Yeshua se inclinó y con el dedo escribió, escribió en la tierra. John Gill's commentary on the New Testament says the following. This history of the woman taken in adultery is missing in the Alexandrian copy and in other ancient copies. Nor it is in Nunnus, Chrysostom, and Philac, <coughs> nor in any of the editions of the Syriac version until it was restored by the DG from a copy of Archbishop Asher, what was in the Arabic and Catholic versions, and in, and in the harmonies of Theron and Ammonius, the former of which lived about years 160 and so within 60 years of Theron Bodas, of the death of Evangelist John, and the other about the year 230. It was also in Stephen's 16 ancient Greek copies, and all besides Stephen 17, except in one, nor need the authenticity of it be doubted of. Eusebius says, it's in the gospel according to the Hebrews, nor should its authority be called in question. Lo que dice aquí John Key en su comentario es que básicamente este versículo de la mujer adulta no se encuentra eh, en algunos textos del antiguo. Joseph <clears throat> Cosmer said the following, It may be here be pointed out that the story of the woman taken in adultery found not only in the current text of John, but actually, but actually belonging to Mark. It is to be found in Codex of the same, it is also truth in several uh, manuscripts. Other Gospels omitted. Seeing it something op opposed to current morals, this in, this in itself argues its genuineness, none could have invented it at a later date. Eusebio dice lo siguiente, de Mateo, él dice, él dice lo siguiente, Mateo compuso su historia, su, su evangelio en hebreo, y todo el mundo lo tradujo como pudo. El, el mismo autor nos dio testimonios de la primera epístola de Juan y también de la de Pedro. Él también dio otra copia, otra historia de una mujer que había sido acusada de pecados ante el ante Yeshua la cual también fue contenida en el Evangelio de Acuerdo de los Hebreos. Of Matthew, he, had, he stated the following. Matthew composes history, his gospel, in the Hebrew dialect, and everyone translated as he was able. The same author made us of testimonies from the first epistle of John, and likewise that of Peter. He also gave another history of a woman who had been accused of many sins before the Lord, which was also contained in the gospel according to the Hebrew. <clears throat> From the beginning of, of, to the end, the gospel of John includes attention to detail and will be important to be and will be important to be a priest. It is possible that John the apostle was a priest and was likely to connect to the priesthood as John says in John chapter 18 verse 15 16. Simon Peter followed Yeshua as did another disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest and entered with Yeshua into the court of the high priest. But Peter was standing at the door outside. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out and spoke to her who kept the door and brought in Peter. Juan capítulo 18, versículo 15 al 16. ¿Alguien lo puede leer por favor? Simón Pedro seguía a Jesús y también otro discípulo. Este discípulo era conocido del sumo sacerdote y entró con Jesús al patio del sumo sacerdote. Pero Pedro estaba afuera, a la puerta. Así que el otro discípulo que era conocido del sumo sacerdote salió y habló a la portera e hizo entrar a Pedro. El Talmud especifica la ubicación donde se tomaba eh, cuenta el ritual en la corte de las mujeres en el templo. The Talmud specifies the location of where this ritual will take place 
in the court of the woman in the temple. Uh, Talmud Sota 7a. Evie says, I am pure. They bring her up to the east gate, which is by the entrance of Nicanor's gate, where they give suspected women the water to drink. El Talmud en Sota 7a dice lo siguiente. Si ella dice, soy pura, la traen a la puerta este, a la, a la puerta este, la que está por la entrada de Nicanor, y le dan a la mujer sospechosa de adulterio el agua para beber. The gospel describes Yeshua as being in the temple, and the woman is brought to him. It appears he is in the court of the woman, the same courtyard where the trial of the sota of the adulterous woman takes place. Details like this would likely not have been known if this account was invented, invented at a later date. Entonces vemos aquí que Yeshua está probablemente en la corte de las mujeres y es en donde le traen a la mujer adultera. La sección de, de, del Evangelio de Juan dice lo siguiente, Juan 8.6. Yeshua se detuvo, se inclinó y escribió con el dedo en el piso. John 8.6. Yeshua stooped down and wrote on the ground with his fingers. He is the only record that we have of Yeshua writing. What did he write? The answer is hidden in the Tanakh. When Hashem delivered Israel, he brought the plagues upon Egypt via the finger of God. Esta es la única ocasión en la que vemos que Yeshua escribe. ¿Qué escribió? La respuesta se encuentra en la Tanaj, cuando el, el Eterno eh, trajo las plagas de Egipto con su dedo. Éxodo 8, 19. Entonces los, ma los magos le dijeron al faraón, este es el dedo de Dios y el faraón, el corazón del faraón se endureció. Exodus 8, 19. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God, and first heart was hardened. The demonic powers of the Egyptians do not contend with the finger of God. Los poderes demoníacos de los egipcios no podían luchar contra el poder maravilloso de Dios. Lucas 11.20 Es por el dedo de Dios que saca los demonios. Entonces el reino, el reino de Dios te ha venido a ti. If I by the finger of God cast out demons, then the king of, of God has come to you. It was the finger of God that wrote the Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy 9.10 Hashem delivered you. Hashem delivered to me the two tablets of stone written, written with the finger of God. Deuteronomy 9.10 Hashem me dio las dos tabletas de piedra escritas con el dedo de Dios. As the shoe of finger writes in the dust, it echoes the finger of God writing the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. Like the marks written upon the dust upon the floor of the temple. The child also trampled underfoot. As the Shua wrote with his fingers, so also did the priest write out the curse. Lightfoot comments. It was the office of the priest when he tried a suspected wife to stoop down and gather the dust of the floor of the sanctuary which when he had infused into water, he was to give the woman to drink. He, he was to write also in a book the curses or adjurations that were to be pronounced upon her. In like manner of Savior stoops down and making the floor itself his book. He writes something in the dust, doubtless against the accusers whom he was Resolve to try. In analogy to those curses and adjurations written in the book by the priest against the woman that was to be tried. Lo que Laiku nos comenta aquí es la comparación entre el Eterno escribiendo en el libro y Yeshua escribiendo en el piso. Y la forma en la que se inclina a escribir. It was on this kind of the Sanhedrin. San not the authority by the Romans to try capital cases. And it is in the Talmud Sanhedrin 41a. And it has also been thought, 40 years before the destruction of the temple, the Sanhedrin were exiled and they did not try capital charges. Lo que dice el Talmud es que 40 años antes de la destrucción del templo, el Sanhedrin había perdido la autoridad para poder poner penas capitales ante la gente. 
El Talmud de Jerusalén dice lo siguiente. Ha sido enseñado 40 años antes de la destrucción del templo, el derecho para las causas capitales ha sido quitado de nosotros. En básicamente, the Jewish of Talmud in the Sanhedrin Tutu states the same thing. Therefore, the request by this group of scribes and Pharisees was not in any real interest of justice. If that were truly the case, and this woman was caught in the act, then the man with whom she committed adultery with should have been brought also. He is the ultimate rock and a hard place for Yeshua. If Yeshua shows mercy, knowing that she is guilty, he violates the Torah. If he agrees with a sentence of execution, his enemies will run to inform the powers that he had been challenging Rome. Entonces lo que sucede aquí es que los, los el grupo de fariseos que lo juntaron le, lo pusieron entre la espada y la pared básicamente. Si dice que es inocente, está violando la Torah y si le pone la, que, la pena de muerte, está en contra del, del imperio romano. Juan 8, 7 al 11, pero cuando continuaban preguntándote, preguntándole, lo vieron y le dijeron, aquel que haga pecado, aquel que no haga pecado, te pide la primera piedra. John 8, 7 to 11, but they continued asking him, he who looked up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, and he throw the first stone at her. Yeshua's answer is stunning. He, was com he has completely turned the tables and does so by quoting the Torah in Deuteronomy 17.7. The hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterward the handles of all the people. But you shall put the evil away from among you. Yeshua ha, otro, ha cambiado la estrategia básicamente y dice en Deuteronomy 17.7 lo siguiente. La mano de los testigos caerá primero contra él para darle muerte y después la mano de todo el pueblo. Así quitarás el mal en medio de ti. The Talmud says the following. When a little has multiplied the ceremony of the bitter waters, was this continued? And it was Rabbi Yohanan Ben Zakai who discontinued it. As it is said, I will not punish your daughters when they commit for them, nor your brides when they commit adultery. Dice el Talmud que Rabino Yohanan de Sakai había descontinuado eh, la ceremonia de las aguas amargas. If they decide to proceed, it is, it is now they who challenge Rome. And like who says the following, you may see by these passages how directly our Savior levels at the equity of this, of this sentence. We need to bring the accusers of the woman to a just trial first. You imagine, you imagine you're, you hear him thus speaking to them. You have brought this adulterous woman to be judged by me. I will therefore will govern myself according to the rule of crime such by the bitter waters. If the woman upon whom a jealousy is brought, though she be indeed guilty, yet if the husband that accuses her be faulty that way himself, she cannot be affected by those waters, nor contract any hurt or danger by them. <coughs> if the divine judgment proceeds in that method, so will I at this time. Are you that accuses woman wholly guiltless in the light his kind of a sin? Because whoever is so, let him cast the first stone. Y Laifu comenta lo siguiente. Pueden ver cómo estos pasajes. Eh, Puede ver cómo por medio de estos pasajes. Directamente el observador. Eh, trae los acusadores. A un justo juicio. ¿Ok? ¿Te imaginas escucharlo a él diciéndoles. Han traído a esta mujer a un para ser juzgada por mí. Entonces. Yo me gobernaré a mí mismo. 
por las leyes de la, de la mujer adulta y de las aguas amargas. Si la mujer que ha sido acusada de serlo es traída y entonces es culpable, entonces el, el esposo que es culpable también tendría la culpa por sí mismo. Ella no podría ser, si fuera también culpable, ella no puede ser afectada por esas aguas, ni contraer ningún daño por ellos. Si el juicio divino procede en este método, también yo en este método, diría Yeshua. Ustedes los acusadores que acusan a esta mujer, son, son eh, no tienen ningún pecado, arrojen la primera piedra. Yeshua okay. quite possibly wrote the names of the women's accusers in the dust. Fulfilling of writing in the dust fulfills the word of the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 17, 13. Hashem, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you shall be disappointed. Those who depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken Hashem, the spring of living waters. Yeshua cumple la profecía de Jeremiah 17, 3 cuando dice, Dios, salvación de Israel, aquellos que te han des, des, eh, desilusionado, aquellos que se apartaron, que sean inscritos en la tierra, porque se han olvidado de Dios, la fuente de agua viviente. The story of the woman accused of adultery was so properly preserved in John 7:58 to 8:11. The thing here is critical, as they who place it in the morning the day after the last day of the festival of Sukkot, Hoshana rather. The previous night in the court of the woman, Yeshua said in John 7, 37, 38. Now one, now on the last and greatest day of the feast, Yeshua stood and cried out, if anyone is thirsty, let him come and drink. He will believe in me, as the scripture has, says, from within him, will flow rivers of living water. La historia de la mujer eh, adúltera está pro, pro, propiamente preservada en el capítulo de Juan y su cronología es crucial para saber en dónde tomó, en qué lugar tomó, ya que lo más probablemente es que tomó en la fiesta de Josana Rada, que es el último día de su cor. Eh, y, y en Juan 7, 37 al 38 dice, Déjame lo leo. Juan 7, 37 al 38. Dice lo siguiente. En el último día, el gran día de la fiesta, Jesús puesto en pie, exclamó en alta voz, si alguien tiene sed, que venga a mí y le da. El que cree en mí, como ha dicho la Escritura, de lo más profundo de su ser, brotarán ríos de agua viva. During this celebration, There was the ritual of the water pouring, in which everyone will sing a song based on a verse from Isaiah 12. Ushatem ayin verazon ni manei ha Yeshua. Isaiah 12, 3. You shall draw water with your from the wells of salvation. Durante la celebración se leía el versículo de Isaías 12. Se cantaba y es y el cual dice: Sacarán agua de alegría de las fuentes de salvación de los pozos de salvación. The Gospel of John does not tell us the identity of this woman. Who is she? Her identity remains a mystery. When Israel sinned with the golden calf, he broke the tablets of the Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy 9.1 I took hold of the two tablets and cast them out of my two hands and broke them before your eyes. No se nos dice la identidad de esta mujer adultera eh, pero cuando dio, eh, cuando Israel pecó con el pecado del becerro de oro, eh, se rompió las primeras tablas de la ley. De Deuteronomio 9, 1 dice, tomé las dos tablas y las aventé con mis dos manos y se quebraron enfrente de mis ojos. And the priest, the priest makes, makes a sota, the daughter of women, drink of the bitter waters. Moshe also made Israel do the same after the sin of the golden calf. Deuteronomy 9.21 I took your sin, the calf which you made, which you have made, and burned it with fire. And stamped it, grinding it very small. 
until it was as fine as dust. And I cast its dust into the brook and descended out of the mountain. Exodus 32, 20. He took the calf which they had made and burnt it with, with fire, ground it to powder and scattered it on the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. El sacerdote hace que la mujer adultera beba de las aguas amargas. Moisés hizo algo similar con el pecado del becerro de oro. Deuteronomio 9.21 Deuteronomio 9.21 Dice lo siguiente Y tomé el objeto del pecado de ustedes, el becerro que se habían hecho, y lo quemé en el fuego. Y lo hice pedazos, desmenuzándolo hasta que quedó tan fino como el polvo, y eché su polvo al arroyo que bajaba del monte. Y luego Exodus 32, 20, dice lo siguiente. Tomó el becerro con el que habían, que habían hecho, lo quemó con el, en el fuego, lo molió como a polvo, lo puso en el agua e hizo que los hijos de Israel bebieran de él. The book of John is written on the sad level, on the sad level, on the mystery, mystical level. The woman is Israel. She was indeed an unfaithful bride. As all the prophets have spoken, her accusers surround, persecute, and condemn her. Where Nachman reveals the secret. The suffering endured by the Jewish people parallels the suffering of the Sota. The bitter waters that the Sota must bring represent the Jews' suffering during the exile. This is in the Sohan. The humiliation of being forced to drink the pure waters that will prove her guilt or innocence is a means of forgiveness. If she is still of sin, the waters she drinks will bring her relief from suffering and she will be blessed with fertility. The same applies to the Jewish nation. Despite the suffering throughout the exiles, the bitter waters they have drunk serve to make the Jews fertile and to grow physically financially and spiritually. El Evangelio de Juan está escrito en el nivel secreto, místico, oculto, en el nivel sol. El, el Rebbe Nachman nos dice lo siguiente. El sufrimiento por el cual el pueblo de Israel sufre es paralelo al de la mujer adúltera, sota. Las aguas amargas que la, mujer, que la sota debe beber representan el sufrimiento de Israel dentro de los exilios es estar en su hogar. La humillación de ser forzada de ver las aguas eh, que las cuales probarían su, su culpabilidad o inocencia es un método por el cual se da perdón. Si es libre de pecado, las aguas cuales las cuales beben le darán eh, tranquilidad del sufrimiento y será bendecida con fertilidad. Lo mismo aplica a la nación judía. A pesar de su sufrimiento por medio de los exilios, las aguas amargas las cuales han bebido sirven para que el judío sea fértil, que crezca física, financieramente y espiritualmente. Yet, in spite of all of this, within the framework of the Torah, Hashem justifies Israel, as the Talmud says in Yoma 85b. It is said, And I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. And it further says, You hope of Israel, the Lord, just as the fountain renders clean the unclean, so does the Holy One, blesses the He, when the rendered clean Israel. Y esto lo que nos dice el Talmud acerca de la, de la justificación de Israel. En Yoma 85b. Y yo procedé agua limpia ante ti y serás limpio. Y después dijo, Tú estarás en Israel, tú eres el Dios. Así como la fuente limpia a lo impuro, también el santo bendito sea, limpiará a Israel. In the merit of Mashiach to the Kenu, the Messiah of righteousness, there will be a day when all accusers against Israel will be silenced. The redemption is coming, and nothing can stop it. All around the woman, she heard the sounds of stone dropping one by one. Her eyes filled with tears. She looked at the dusty feet 
in case on your sandals. His, his yacht flowed downward like waterfalls, and his eyes pierced her soul. Mashiach speaks to her and to each of us. Where, where are your accusers? Does no one condemn you? No one, sir. Ne neither do I. Go and sing no more. En el mérito de Mashiach el Teino, el mensaje es lo justo, nuestra justicia. Habrá un día cuando todos los acusadores de Israel serán silenciados. La redención vendrá y nada podrá detenerla. Todos alrededor de la mujer es, estaban tirando las piedras. Ella escuchaba cómo las tiraban. Veía los, los pies empolvados, lágrimas que eran en sus ojos mientras su alma era penetrada. El Mashiach le dijo y, le, y nos dice cada uno de nosotros. ¿Dónde están tus pecados? En ningún lugar, Señor. Ve y peca. Y ya no peques. Say no more. Amén. Shalom.